there's an old saying that goes something like this. If you find a turtle on top of a fence post, you know he didn't get there by himself. Now, I'm not saying all the graduates are turtles. But I think it is generally true that you would not have been able to achieve this accomplishment without the support of family members and friends. If you are a family member or friend of one of the graduates today, would you rise? Let's give them all a hand. Thank you. And as you may imagine, an event like this can never take place without a lot of behind-the-scenes work. And I'd like to particularly thank Ms. Kim Orlowski, who's here at, at my right, your left. And then quite a number of staff and student volunteers that you see around the, uh, the edges. You might wave your hands. So let's thank all of them for all their hard work. In 1887, the North Carolina General Assembly passed an act authorizing the establishment of the North Carolina College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts. This year, we are celebrating the 125th anniversary of that college, now known as North Carolina State University. In keeping with this celebration, I thought I would tell you about a couple of interesting things in the history of the ECE department. The first course in electrical engineering was taught in the physics department around 1893 or shortly thereafter. By the end of the 1890s, the department was known as the Department of Physics and Electrical Engineering. Professor William Hand Brown, Jr. came as head of the Department of Physics and Electrical Engineering in 1908. He became the first head of the Electrical Engineering Department in 1917 and remained until his retirement in 1944. An interesting story was told by his son, Dr. Owens Hand Brown, in a letter that I think was written around 1989. <clears throat> One night during my early days at State, I think this was around 1916, I went with Dad to his office. He had a gadget called a cat whisker detector, which he adjusted by means of a muffled buzzer in his desk drawer. At 10 minutes before 10, he handed me one side of a headset and I heard the Naval Observatory clock ticking off the seconds all the way from Arlington, Virginia, and no wires. At exactly 10, Dad set his watch. Later, a PA system called a Magnavox was displayed at a local record shop. This was borrowed by the department. Dad taped his headset to the microphone, and KDKA could be heard all over the room. This may have been the first loudspeaker in Raleigh. Another story pertains to how one of the local streets got its name. Just north of Hillsborough Street, Van Dyke Avenue runs between Dixie Trail and Oberlin Road. According to the department history, this is how the street got its name. It started out as a driveway along the side of Professor Brown's house. A developer then carried it on through to Brooks Avenue and beyond. The city fathers wanted to call it Brown Street, but Professor Brown was quite self-effacing and demurred. He told his wife about it, and she said, why not call it after your beard? And it came to pass that Professor Brown's Van Dyke beard was honored by having a street named for it. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> While we're on the topic of where names come from, now that you all have degrees in electrical and computer engineering, do you know why they call it hypertext? It's because it has too much Java. <laughs> Back to the history of the ECE department. Throughout the last century, NC State has continuously prepared outstanding engineers to contribute to the state, the country, and the world. I hope you feel a kinship with these former graduates. In a real sense, you, along with the students in Professor Brown's classes, 
The faculty on the platform today and thousands of others are part of the same family. In fact, although this graduation for many of you marks a departure for NC, from NC State, it is really just the beginning of a lifelong relationship. It's very important for us to keep in touch because when you are successful, we look good. And when the department moves to the next level, the value of your degree increases. This symbiotic relationship is important to both of us. With regard to keeping in touch, I can also attest to the fact that there are few things that professors enjoy more than hearing from former students. And now the words that you've all been waiting for. That concludes our ceremony. <laughs> I would like to ask you uh, well, before I ask you, let's hear it one more time for the class of fall of 2012.